how shall we make it into the kingdom? How can we make it into the kingdom? Uh, we, when we reflect on who we are, uh, when we're alone and we're transparently honest with ourselves, we have to ask the question, how can I make it into the kingdom as I am? When we take a look at all of us as a community, uh, God has uh, not pulled any punches when he describes who we are. In Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, in describing us in verse 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. The heart, meaning the mind of man, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Uh, man may not understand what other men are thinking because the, the mind, the heart of man is deceitful above all things. They have deceived mankind into thinking they're one thing when they're really another. And God asked the question, how is it possible for man to know good from evil in other men? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who among men can know it? The Lord answers his own question in verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So the heart is deceitful. Man cannot tell what lies within the heart, but God can, and God will give every man according to his works. You will remember that in Revelation, uh, we have these words of promise, but uh, for those of us who may not have ourselves in line with God, uh, we read that with some fear, where Jesus himself says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his works shall be. Here, between Revelation and Jeremiah, we find God saying, Man's heart is deceitful. They are deceivers. They have deceived each other. But I can see what's going on. And Jesus says in Revelation, I can see all things, and behold, I come quickly, and I've got a reward for all men, good and evil. And so the question for us is, if God is saying we're deceitful above all things, if we're deceivers among ourselves, how do we make it into the kingdom? Because I need to move from being a deceiver to an overcomer. And I just want to use one story to paint this picture for us today. You know your circumstance. You know your inclinations. You know your challenges. Point the finger, let's each of us, at us as we look at this interesting story that God has provided so that we might be able to transform from being a deceiver into being and overcomer. Would you turn with me to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 25, Genesis chapter 25, uh, an interesting trail of drama within the family of our forefathers. We are looking at Genesis chapter 25, and I'm going to read for you starting at verse 23. Um, here, uh, Isaac's twin boys are born. Verse 23, again, Genesis chapter 25, beginning at verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. 
and Jacob was three score and Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage, pot, uh, pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said unto Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, for I am faint. Therefore his name, therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. The younger says to the older, Sell me this day your birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. What profit shall a birthright do me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he sware unto him, and he sold him his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. The drama begins. In inspecting the characteristic of the deceitful, we have these two boys that are born to Isaac, Jacob and Esau. The Lord had already told us in the word that the younger would be the one with many nations, that he would be blessed. But yet there's something within us, and it might, you might find it within your family, you might find it within you, that even though the Lord has promised me something, I, I'm going to help the Lord out. I, 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 I don't trust his timing, I don't trust his ways. Doesn't he see that these folk are, are getting ahead of me? And so I'm going to attempt to do it myself here, the younger, using a pot of soup, lentils, bribes from the older. Give me all that the Lord has promised you. We will not look upon the foolishness of Esau just now, of giving up what God had made possible for him for a bowl of soup. But let us move on. You see, these sons don't come out the way they are without gaining from the DNA of their parents uh, that which lies within their parents. We, 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 we are not uh, uh, made angry if it were not for the environment that we have grown up in. We are not made uh, foolish in our decision making were it not uh, of us uh, replicating that which have come from our parents or grandparents or family. Some of us have issues that we are born with because we get these things from the DNA of our family. Other foolishness we pick up and cultivate on our own, but they are things that we gain from our family. Look, look here now. Let's go to chapter 27. Let me prove it to you. Chapter 27. And let's see where the son gets his deceitfulness from. Uh, we're going to read chapter 27, beginning at verse 1. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, he called Esau, his eldest son, and said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Behold, here I am. And he said, Behold now, I, I am old, and I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, thy bow, and go out into the field, and take me some venison, and make me savory meat, such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat it, that my soul might bless thee before I die. And Rebekah, the wife, heard when Isaac spake to Esau his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. And Rebekah spoke unto Jacob, remember who she loves, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison, make me savory meat, that I may eat, 
and bless thee before the Lord, uh, bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock and fetch me hence two good kids of the goats, and I will make them of savory meat for thy father such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. Jacob questioned this of his mother in, in verse 11, and, and he said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. Understand the depths of deception here. He is not questioning the logic or the rights, the morality of what his mother is suggesting. He is on board. The heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. He's questioning, is the plan good enough? Not if the plan is good. And his mother, uh, he says to his mother in verse 12, My father, peradventure, will feel me, and I shall see him, I shall seem to him as a deceiver. Now, what you need to understand before we go any further is that the name that he has been given, Jacob, means surplanter, ultimately means deceiver. And, and it is ironic here that he says, I like this plan. We will deceive my father, but let's make sure that we're careful so that he doesn't view me as a deceiver. He doesn't view me as my name that I got. And his mother said unto him, verse 13, uh, Upon me be the curse, my son. Only obey my voice and go fetch them me. Trust me, I got it. Don't you worry about it. Just do as I say. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother. And his mother made him savory meat, such as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. Now he's going to smell like his brother with the clothes on, you will see soon. Verse 16, and she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck, and she gave him savory meat and the bread, which she had prepared into the hand of her son, Jacob. The trap is ready. He has his brother's clothes on. He is a surplanter. He is taking his brother's place by deceit. He's a deceiver. He has deceived his brother already. His mother is a deceiver. She is building this plan that will uh, uh, drive a line in the middle of this family. You might have these folk in your family, your community, on your job. You may have them in the ecosystem of your life. But I want you to know that there is a way for a deceiver to be transformed into an overcomer. I don't want you to be overcome by anxiety in this story just yet. The drama is great, but the word of God, the will of God, the outcome of God is greater in this story. Look, look at what happens now. Verse 18. He begins the lies to his father, and there are three lies that deceivers tell, and I want you to count them with me. Verse 18, and he came unto his father and said, my father, and he said, here I am, who art thou, my son? Isaac cannot see, and he wants to know who he's addressing. And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn, this is the first lie now, I am Esau, thy firstborn, I have done according as thou badest me, Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat my venison, that thou soul may bless me. He isn't just lying to his father, but he's deceiving his father, and he's outdoing his brother, and he's in alignment with this, this, this act with his mother. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou have found it so quickly? I... I just gave the command. You have come back really quick. Now listen, it's one thing to lie. It's one thing to deceive your fellow man. 
But when you bring God's name into the depth of your sin, you had better watch out. Don't bring God into the depths of your sin. Look at what it said, what he says. Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, this is verse 20, and he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Now it's not just that I got this thing, but what I'm about to provide you, God gave me. You know, that person who comes to you and says, I, I, you know, I, the, the Lord told me to tell you, this is the way we should go. You know, I, I, I was praying and I, I think the Lord wants you to go in this direction. Brothers and sisters, the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. The only voice we ought to pay attention to is not the elder, not the pastor, not your mother, not your brother, obviously in the story, but you need to listen to the voice of God. Is God telling you, go down this path? But Isaac was deceived here. And Isaac said unto Jacob, verse 21, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee. My son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father, and he felt him. And he said, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy, as his brother's Esau's hands. So he blessed him. Verse 24, and he said, God always gives us another chance to come right. He said, art thou my very son Esau? And the third time he lied. He said, I am. Reflect with me, if you would, on the dialogue between Jesus and Peter. This is in John 13, towards the end. I go to a place, but you can't come now. Peter says, no, anywhere you go, I will go. I am your child. I will follow you. He says, before the sun comes up and the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And in fact, Peter would make every attempt three times before the cock crew to deceive others who were around him, escaping the identity that he knew Jesus. And on this third time, when Isaac asked his son, are you indeed Esau? He said, I am. The gravity of this can't be underscored enough. For in Peter's time, as he was denying Jesus and deceiving those on the outside, in the courtroom, that sham court, the identity of Christ was being asked for. And the words from Christ was, I am. The, 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 the interplay of words between the Old Testament and the New, these two situations of deception and denial of God's people, of ultimately God's salvation, the blessing that we will get from God, they're tied so intricately together, we cannot deny them. Now here we have these three deceptions by Jacob. And we come now to the unfortunate, the unfortunate in verse 36. Uh, uh, Esau has come after his brother has gone. Esau finds out that his brother has stolen 
has deceived and taken hold of his blessings and he cries to his father and his father trembles greatly and says, I have given away thy blessing. And look, look at what um, uh, 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 Esau says here in verse 36. And he said, is not he rightly named Jacob? For he hath supplanted me these two times. He has deceived me these two times. Uh, he has taken away my birthright with the lentils. And behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, hast thou not any blessing for me? And he had no blessing for Esau but to say you will serve now your younger brother. If we go to verse 41, and we'll go into our lesson from there, you just needed this context of the character of a deceiver. Verse 41 says, And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother, which is to say, my father is soon going to die. And I will mourn him. But when he's dead and I'm done mourning him, I'm going to kill that boy. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah. And she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said, Behold, thy brother Esau, uh, as touching thee, doth comfort himself, purposing to kill thee. Now, my son, flee, go to my brother. We don't have time today to go into all of the things that take place as he goes to Laban. Uh, but it is interesting, and we are worth noting, that on his way to Laban is where we see that there is hope for the deceiver. I want you to know there's hope for you. I want you to know that you're not just left to yourself, that God has not given up on you, that there's hope for you, that you can be an overcomer with God, that you can make it into the kingdom, whether you have deceived or been deceived, whether you are, uh, uh, as Jesus says in Matthew 15, that out of the heart come murderings and dishonesty and and lyings and blasphemings and adulteries and all of the things that come from the heart that are deceitful, that are, are lustful in this world. Even if you are like that, there's hope for that person. There's hope for that soul. There's hope for you. There's hope for me. Because there's hope for the deceiver to become an overcomer. And I want to show it to you. The beginning of... Jacob's conversion is found in Genesis chapter 28. And uh, I want to give you, uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look at verse 10. Let's take a look at verse 10 and go down so that we can see what God does in the middle of our foolishness. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night. And because the sun was set, and he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereas thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. I love God. 
that even though I'm a deceiver, even though I'm a sinner, even though I'm a wrongdoer, that he loves me so much that he comes and in the middle of my deception, having gotten advantage of other people, having stolen twice, that he still has a plan for me and says, I'm not going to give up until my plan to bless you has come true. I, 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 I want you to understand that even though our question as deceivers, even though our question as sinners is, how do I become an overcomer? How can I get into the kingdom? God does not ask that question. When he sees you, he says, how can I allow my overcomer to see that they're going to be blessed? How can I change the, 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 the drama of their world to be the joy of their world? How can I change the, the, the garbage can of their world? to be the glorious heaven of their experience. How can I do that for my people? God sees that it's possible that you can be an overcomer today, despite the garbage pan, mess and smell of our minds. He reaches into the gutter, the dirtiness of earth, the refuse of earth and pulls us up and brings us from the darkness into his marvelous light. God has got a plan for deceivers like you and like me. Well, in response now to, to, to this vision, here is the beginning of the conversion of Jacob in response to this. Remember, he has seen the pathway to heaven, the ladder. He has seen those who work divinely on God's behalf from heaven to earth. He has seen the Lord himself. He has heard the Lord's voice himself and God has promised him something. I want you to know that because you know about this Bible, you have seen the pathway from earth to glory. Because you've read this Bible, you, you, you have understood that his angels are working on his behalf and ours to save you. Uh, because you have read this word, because you have seeped into this word and it into your heart, you have to now acknowledge that you have heard God's voice, that he has spoken to you through this word. And the question is, when you see God's path, when you see his word, what happens to you? What's your response? Look at Jacob's response. Verse 16, and Jacob awaked out of his sleep and he said, surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not. I would not have expected him to be where a deceiver like me is. But somehow God has chosen to be where I am. And I want to give God glory for being where we are, no matter how foolish we are. And God makes sure, Matthew always tells us, Matthew always tells us in testimony that God has not left him. Jacob is now saying, I didn't think God would be foolish enough to be around me, a sinner. But I see now that where I am, God is here also. I got to give God praise for that. Verse 17, and he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? This, uh, this is none other than the house of God. Uh, this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob uh, arose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it, and he called the name of it Bethel, which is to say, house of God. But the name of that city was first called Luz. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me, if this is true, that God is gonna be with me as he promised, here's what I'm gonna do. If he's going to keep me the way he said, uh, 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 then I will go and I'll give bread to eat and, and raiment to put on. So, so, so I will come again to my father's house in peace. If, if this is possible, 
that I can go where I need to go, get the things I need to go, and return safely back to where I'm running from. If God's going to work it all out for me, then he's going to be my God, and I'll be his child. And, and this stone, he says in verse 22, have I set up as a pillar, so shall God, so shall it be God's house, and of all that that will give me, surely I will give the tenth unto thee. If you said you're going to bless me, I will glorify you, God. If you said you're going to be my protector, then I'm going to be your servant. If you said you're going to be my father, then I'm going to be your son. He makes up in his mind. Since God has decided to be mine, I am deciding to be his. And the first place where you and I can start to be converted from the foolishness of our minds to the wonderful nature of God's child is in the acknowledgement that he exists just as Jacob does here in the milestone understanding where you heard God's voice. You know your journey. When did you come to understand who he was and who you were in comparison to him? When did you come to understand that his truth is, is everlasting? When did you come to understand that his truth can change? When did you come to understand that despite who you are, God determined to be bless you and to change you into who you were meant to be? Where was that place? What is that time? Where is your Bethel moment where you understood God is here? with me. That is the beginning. Time would exhaust us today. We would not have enough of it to go into the details of um, uh, the experience that Jacob has with Laban there those 20 years. Uh, but it is enough for us to say that there is great drama. He goes, he desires Laban's, uh, his uncle's uh, daughter, uh, the younger Rachel. He is deceived. The deceiver is deceived by his uncle. And, and, and he gives him the older daughter, Leah. And, 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 and then uh, he has to work another seven years for Rachel. And then he has to work another six years for the cattle. And ultimately, he decides that he's going to leave and go back home because in these 20 years, he has been deceived. His wages have changed 10 times as Laban changed the rules up on him. It's been unfair. And he takes his children. He has 11 children between uh, Leah and Rachel and their handmaidens. Quite the drama and story that we will not be able to explore today. But where we find what you and I will need to do to be overcomers, to change, to transition from being deceivers whose hearts are desperately wicked to overcomers whose hearts uh, overflow with the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, meekness, kindness, long-suffering, tenderness. We have to now come to this place where Jacob wrestles with God and who he was and ultimately becomes who God determined him at the beginning to be. So he leaves Laban. He goes back home now. And on his way back home, he sends a man to his brother Esau who had planned to kill him, you remember. It was 20 years ago. And he tells him, tell Esau that I'm on the way. His servant, his brother, is on the way. The word comes back to Jacob. Your brother Esau is coming with 400 men. Great anxiety takes over. Jacob, who has been promised by God that he would be blessed. Great anxiety overtakes Jacob who God has already shown the fruit of his promise in that he now has 11 sons and much cattle and sheep. He is wealthy. God has blessed him. God has separated him from the anxiety of Laban. 
all of the difficulty is behind him. God has made him rich, but yet, even in the middle of God's blessings, when we hear some danger is coming, we are filled with anxiety. We are fearful that somehow the enemy might do in what God has blessed us with. And so Esau is on the way. Ultimately, he sends different gifts. He attempts to appease his brother. But those things don't work. He splits his family so that his brother can't kill the entire family. Perhaps, he says, he will be able to kill one, but the rest of the family will survive. And he's left alone. And in being left alone here now, we find Jacob uh, sleeping in the night, and he's confronted by an angel. And this angel and Jacob wrestle all night. We, we dare not run past this text. We dare not run past this at all. We need to understand that if you're going to be an overcomer, you're going to have to wrestle with God. You have, we have, cultivated sins over time that if it were left up to us, we cannot change our inclinations just in the moment. We can't go cold turkey with these things. We can make up in our minds, I'm going to stop. I'm going to change. I'm going to be different. But without wrestling with God, you will not change. You're going to have to wrestle with God in the night, wrestle with God in the day, wrestle with God in your, in your closet. You're going to have to wrestle with God. I'm not talking about in church in front of everybody else. He had to wrestle with God when nobody else was there, and it was just him and God, and he had to wrestle with God. You've got to pray with God. Let me explain to you, this wrestling is not fighting against God. In this wrestling with, with this angel of the Lord, with, in the wrestling with God, he refused to let God go until God would bless him, that God would assure him that everything was okay. And some of us here need to wrestle with God for our children. We need to wrestle with God for our lives. We need to wrestle with God for our coworkers. We need to wrestle with God for our family members. Uh, wrestle with God for our marriage. Wrestle with God for our jobs. Wrestle with God for the blessings that he, he wants to bless us. But he needs to see faith so express that you will not let let go God in prayer so that you can go watch TV. You will not let go God in prayer quickly so that you can go and do something with other folk. You need to wrestle with God, spend time with God, and not allow God to slip from your hands while you wrestle with him. You see, this is a different Jacob who wrestles here with the angel now. This Jacob has, has changed. This is not the Jacob who stole from his brother. This is a Jacob which over 20 years has uh, had other people steal from him. This is a Jacob that God promised to be blessed and he has become a good man now, a moral man now. He is depending on God now. And he, remember that he, this is a Jacob who saw God, who heard God's voice, who understood uh, that God had angels ascending and descending from heaven to earth, that there was help for deceivers like him. And now he is not just seeing God and hearing God. He is engaged with God. He is wrestling with God. And God invites us into this intimate relationship where we interact with him closely. Isaiah 118, come now. Let us reason together. Let's work this out. Uh, uh, you've got sin that we've got to talk about. I've got salvation that you need to be about. Come and let us wrestle this out. Let's reason this out. And some of us hear in, in, in this hearing of my voice. We need to wrestle with God, that thing that has been holding us back from a path that leads to salvation. God is inviting us to that. 
But now he's a different man. He's a transformed man. And as the angel of the Lord said unto him, let me go. I, I, I have to go for day is coming. He says, I will not let thee go until you bless me. And in verse 27 of chapter 32, the angel of the Lord said unto him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall no more be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. You're no longer called the deceiver. Your name shall be called Israel, overcomer with God, having prevailed with God. Yeah. Overcomers make it into the kingdom. Uh, why? Overcomers wrestle with God every day in prayer. Overcomers wrestle with God in the word every day. Overcomers wrestle with God in, in seeking his word, in seeking his blessing every day. Paul says, I die daily. I need to be crucified to this world and alive in Christ. And I need this refreshing every day. And overcomers wrestle with God and overcome every day. What is that thing that you need to overcome? For only overcomers will make it into the kingdom. There is... A text I had read for you earlier from Jeremiah 17 and verse 10 that I the Lord search the heart I try the reins to give every man according as his way and according to the fruit of his doings two things I will leave you with when Jesus told his disciples, I am going to go, but I am going to send you a comforter. That comforter we understand is the Holy Spirit. And when we crucify the old man, the old flesh, the old Jacob, and we leave those things behind and allow the Holy Spirit to abide within us, the fruit of having the Holy Spirit in us will be love, joy, peace, not deception not hatred, not deceit, not betrayal, not adultery, not fornication, not dishonesty. For people who do those things will not make it into the kingdom, but only those who have the fruit of the Spirit. And, and, and God makes it clear that I judge the reins, even every man, given every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. And if the fruit of your doings is love, joy, peace, my friends, we will make it into the kingdom. There is a, there is a, there is a text we have, there is a text we have in um, uh, Psalms 139. I want to leave you with these two verses. Psalms 30, 139. I'll use the first verse. I'll give you three verses. I'll give you the first verse. O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. And after he goes in, I can't go anywhere without you knowing what I'm doing. You see what I'm doing. You understand my path. I, I can't say a word without you knowing it before it comes on my tongue. I, if I go into the depths of the sea, you are there. If I go into heaven, you're there. If I go to the east, you're there. You know everything about me, Lord. And so uh, in his desperation, in asking God to help him to be who he was meant to be, to transform him, to make sure that there's no deception in him, David cries out in verse 23 and 24, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So, Lord, search me 
and try my heart and see if there's any wicked way in me and, and lead me in the path everlasting. Lead me in the way everlasting. Search me and find within me, God. You've got to wrestle with God. And when you're wrestling with him and you're praying with him, you need to pray this prayer. Ask God, Lord, search me. Find within me things that are unlike you and strip those things from me. Take them from me. Show me the pathway to glory. Just like you showed Jacob, the ladder from earth to heaven. Show me your pathway to everlasting life. You've got to be an overcomer or you will not make it into glory. And next week we're going to talk about overcomers by God's grace again. For in Revelation, God seven times says, He that overcometh shall inherit the kingdom of God. You and I are meant to be overcomers with God. The word Israel means overcomer with God. You and I need to wrestle in this way with God so he can show you what needs to be fixed and empower you to be an overcomer over it. We are the children of Israel. We're the children of the overcomer. And as spiritual Israel, we are spiritual overcomers. You and I, in order to make it to the kingdom, can overcome by the blood of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, you and I can experience the kingdom. My prayer is that you will wrestle with God today, tonight, and forever. And you will not let go of him until he has blessed you and made you an overcomer. May God bless you. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the, the hope of salvation through your son. We thank you for the hope of transformation from being deceivers to being overcomers. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We ask that you would do even more so that we might be saved. Cover us completely, thoroughly, today, in this moment, with your son's blood, which we claim as our covering from sin. Wrap us in the robe of his righteousness so that when you look upon us, we might be acceptable before you so that you will no longer see deceivers, men and women's hearts who are wicked and framed with sin, but you will see us as righteous and covered in that glorious righteous robe that is your sons. This is our desire, it is our plea. And through faith, we accept this new identity as being overcomers by your grace. We thank you, Father, as we pray in your son's name and by your spirit's power. Amen. Amen.